Hello and welcome to another episode of uh, Quick Glance, again focusing on the Azure Developer CLI. So within the previous video, um, we made a quick walk through the Azure Developer CLI, what it's good for, um, and kind of did a quick start um, walking through the um, get started area. Now within this video, I would like to walk through the code that was created and the template that is used. So we already saw that um, the, the different templates are available within the GitHub repository. So you have under Azure samples, several uh, templates. I mean, you have under Azure samples, a lot of templates. So what you can focus on are the ASETD templates. Now, um, Having said that, when you um, select the, the ASETD templates, you get more than just the to-do apps that you saw within the help.sap, uh, help, help um, of, of Microsoft. And for example, we have a service bus.net function app. Um, we have a pub sub depper C sharp service bus, very interesting. Um, now the help or the, the Microsoft help, the Azure help, only references the to-do apps. And from my perspective, having taken a look at the other apps, well, they, they leverage parts of the ACD templates, but from my perspective, they are not following the best practices completely that are laid out in the to-do apps. I did not yet dive too deep into that, but if you start and if you wanna um, check how things should be structured, take a look at the to-do apps and do not yet uh, um, take the other ones as, although they are labeled as the very, very best practices. So um, we will we will focus uh, throughout all the videos only on the to-do apps. Now, um, when you have seen the last video, what I did was I started the ASETD up um, and created the um, created the app within Azure. Now, during the ASETD up, which is kind of an, an umbrella command over several ASETD commands, uh, this template was cloned and it was enriched with some data that I was queried, uh, namely environment name, Azure location, Azure subscription. So let's take a look how things um, look like within the code. So as you can see here, this is the, um, directory where all the information was cloned from the template repository and the ASET DCLI added some information in there. Now let's roughly walk through what is in there, what is ASET D specific and, and um, how things are structured. So um, as you can see, of course, there is the, the readme file that we saw within the repository. Um, there is, of course, a license file. I think it's MIT, of course. Um, there is some notice, I would guess, for um, internal reasons and for the licensing. We have an open API YAML, which um, basically is the open API description of our API endpoints that we have um, used within our to-do app. And then we have the first file that is um, definitely specific for the Azure CLI, Azure Developer CLI, ASETD, and that's the azure.yaml file. And within this um, YAML file, we have a YAML language server referenced um, up here in order to have the, the schema. And this Azure YAML file basically lays out the metadata of our app. Now, really with respect to the app. So as you see, the developer is in the focus. So I, as a developer, do not too much care about um, the infrastructure. So within the metadata, I want to know what are the building blocks of my applications. And that's kind of laid out here. At least that's my understanding. Um, we have a name, which is the, the, the to-do app, uh, ACA. Um, we have as metadata, the corresponding referenced template, including its version. Then um, we have the, the uh, services that are used within this um, application. And there are two, namely an API and a web 
so the back end and the front end. And there is the information around where is the source code. So we have source slash API, which is this folder here. And we have source.web, which is the second folder, which contains the web front end. We have the languages. So um, according to my understanding, this would also mean that we can have um, polyglot apps and um, we have the corresponding hosting environment, which is in this case, the container app. We, we saw in the, in the previous video that there are several hosts supported up to now, which are functions apps, static web apps, functions, so Azure functions, um, as well as container apps and AKS is soon to follow. So this, um, this is basically the, the metadata file that probably tells the ACD where to find the code for the app and where to put it and how to, to mingle around with it in order to deploy it, in this case, using the container app. Now, there are now several further folders um, that are, of course, of interest. We already took a look at the source folder, which is clearly structured in the web file and uh, API directory, my web directory and the API directory, which contains basically, well, it's a React app. So that what's what's in there. Um, we have the corresponding package.json, um, which uh, contains a lot of, of uh, scripts already that, that are used also by um, Azure, the, the Azure uh, developer CLI. And um, well, of course, the corresponding dependencies. Um, as we can see here, um, Microsoft wants to use npm ci when it does the installation. It also provides a log file. So if you do an npm install here, you might run into versions that you would not have foreseen when creating the template. So um, yeah, that's what it is. And we have the same for the API for the, the back end, which is basically a pure, um, I would assume, TypeScript file with um, Express. Yeah, that's what it is. And um, I would assume everything is in there. So we have the tsconfig.json. Yes, that's there. We have common.js. Um, yeah, that's nothing unusual. Uh, from my perspective, it's quite nicely structured um, according to best practices, so that's cool. So here we have the source code of our app, and of course we have some test files. That's something that's really appreciated. So um, Azure wants you, or Microsoft wants you really to use tests in order to use the source code. I mean, that sounds now quite um, as a no-brainer, but um, seeing projects I don't think it's a no-brainer. It's something that is often not done. Now then, um, we have one folder that is, of course, relevant for the infrastructure because we need infrastructure in Azure, and that's all put into the infra folder, which is then also the best practice. So um, we will see that at within another video what, what's at least the minimum layout that you need in order to make use of the Azure Developer CLI. And the infra and the source folder are two of them. Within the infra folder, you define um, making use of BICEP, the infrastructure as code. So um, we have one, one main file, which um, well, contains several information, um, but also then references the um other files that are needed in order to um create the the web app and um application insights and so on and so forth so this is just the the, the main entry point um we have then here our resources um so all the resources that are not directly related to um to the app as far as i have seen not 100% sure. Now we have also the, yeah, we, we have here really the resources and then we have some substructuring with respect to the API and the web resources, which contain, um, which have some dependencies. And um, yeah, I think it's a very nice um, layout and structure. Um, 
So this is something that you can really use in, in your projects, even if you're not using a set D um, in order to structure your um, bicep files. So as we see here, we have the, the API bicep file with some parameterization and um, all the stuff that you would need in order to um, be able to do things like, like access to the registry, which we have here. Um, and um, yeah, the, the container app thingies and so on. So that's that's really a very nice structure of um, putting infrastructure as code, making use of biceps. So you have a very nice modularization. Um, you have all the things um, yeah, kind of put apart and not clashed everything into one big file. So that's really cool. Um, well, the assets folder is of course the one for the um, GitHub repository in order to have the, the images there. And then um, we see several dot files. Um, how do we start best? So we have been at the infrastructure. So let's say uh, I want to set up pipelines, which is possible with um, the Azure D developer CLI. And there are two directories that are of relevance for that. There is the dot a set do um, directory, which is the directory that contains the information around the Azure DevOps service. So here you have the corresponding YAML file that uh, contains information when you want to uh, do the deployment via the um, Azure DevOps. There is one thing that you have to keep in mind up to now when recording this video at the end of August, it is not possible to um, do uh, ACT pipeline config and target Azure DevOps. So you have to do some manual steps which are described in the readme in the corresponding um, directory. So if you want to use Azure to, uh, DevOps, go to the .azdo um, folder and check the readme because that's not automated yet, um, but will be soon. Or if you want to use GitHub Actions, you have um, .github workflows where you have a sample um, GitHub Action file where, where you see basically that probably your code gets pushed to a GitHub repository. Um, it is running in a container. So as you can see here, it's leveraging a container for the Azure Dev CLI. It checks out the repository. It logs into Azure with some credentials that are stored as secrets within um, uh, your GitHub repository. And then the Azure Developer CLI is executed. And as you can see here, um, the Azure Developer CLI already had the automation in the background in mind because you have this minus minus no prompt option. So there will be no prompt and all the information that is needed that we had to key in in the video that I did with respect to the ACT up command um, as environment variables, namely the environment name, the location, and the subscription ID. And then you have the um, ACT deploy step, which um, basically does the same. Now, as you can already see, there is no ACT up step because the initialization, so cloning of the repository is not necessary. You are already within the repository that contains all the data. Um, and that is checked out here. So that's why there are different commands um, in there, not the ACT up as one, one big command. Now, when you want to um, deploy the stuff via GitHub Actions, uh, that's something that um, is possible via the ACT from, uh, automatically. So without any manual intervention. And we will see that in another video, I would guess. And then of course we have the .vs code um, folder, which um, contains some um, extensions recommendations. So you have uh, an extension that's available um, within the extension store. Um, let's shortly check. So we have the Azure Developer, developer, CLI. Hopefully, it will find it. Um, is it hidden here? No, it is not. 
Well, let's shortly check ACD. I installed it already, but I simply forgot what it was. Um. Hmm. Cool. Um, there is an extension. You have to believe me that. Um, and I installed it, but I'm just not able to find it. Ah, I'm completely blind. There it is. Azure Developer CLI. Um, here we go. So uh, you can install that as an extension. Then you can use the command palette and um, hopefully um, get access to that one. Yeah. So here we have the Azure Developer, which is the, the, uh, the entry point. And then you can deploy and have all the commands that you have with ACETD as an extension within um, VS Code. Okay, um, and then we have the, the launch.json and the tasks.json, which you can and should use for uh, local debugging. And um, yeah, that, that's also something that we will see in another video. Because in this video, we just want to focus on the code. But as you can see here, um, if you're using VS Code, everything is here. Um, I think there is also Visual Studio supported, but I don't know if, um, I didn't try it out, to be honest, what, what um, is available there from scratch. I would assume it's basically the same functionality. Now, um, yeah, we have the infrastructure, we have the VS Code for local debugging, we have the dev container definition, of course, as you can see here, it's making use of the, the features, features feature, of dev containers. So it while the features um, area within the dev container definition, it tells um, it tells the, the startup of the dev container what to install. So we have the GitHub CLI. Funnily, it's two here and not 2.1. Well, whatsoever. We have the Azure CLI, we have Python.net and um, Docker from Docker. We have several extensions that get installed here. We have some port forwarding for um, debugging, I guess. And uh, of course we have the Docker file, which um, yeah, just takes a base dev container and then installs everything from um, everything around the ACD, so the Azure Developer CLI via curl, so for Linux. That's, that's totally fine. And it also installs the Azure Functions Core Tool version 4, as you can see here. So you might have a bit more within the dev container that you might want to have or might need, because if you don't have Azure Functions running, why should you install that? So I think you, you can um, kind of tailor that, but it's a very good starting point here. If you want to use dev container, I think that's a, a very good um, point to get things started. And then we have one file or one directory to be precise called dot azure which is um created when you do an a set the um init or an a set the up and what is in here here is the configuration that you have done when executing the initialization and the first deployment so the config.json contains the uh, version of your um, deployment and you have the or probably the version of the um, of the configuration and then you have some default environment as you have seen in the other video that I will reference in the show notes the, uh, we, we have defined it as quick glance minus ACT minus test um, there is only one environment and that's then taken as default environment you can change the default environment as you have seen um, just before with the Azure developer, you can do a, create a new environment. You can select an environment, so set the default environment or refresh the um, environment values from the latest infrastructure deployment. Um, that's basically then uh, targeting not the default environment, but the um, infrastructure. And talking about the infrastructure, there is one further directory, which is named the same as the environment. And in here, 
we have several JSON files and one .n file. Let's take a look at the JSON files. What we see here is um, the parameters, namely the uh, environment, the value of the um, location. And there is one principal ID. I guess that's uh, the one that's used within Azure Active Directory. Um, and then we have some web parameters. Here we have, in addition, an, an image name. Uh, we should see the same here. Yes, um, it's again for the API, the same as for the web. The only difference is the image name um, that gets updated when you do the deployment so that you have everything in place here. Um, then we have the .end file, which contains all the information around um, the Azure principal ID, the location again, the environment name, and also your subscription ID, and several other um, information that you need during the uh, deployment, like the image name for the API and the, the web image. So that's kind of the, the .end files that are then probably also used when you do a local execution. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that was it with respect to walking through the code, right? So we saw um, when the template gets cloned, there is some basic structure. There are some specifics for the Azure Developer CLI. For example, this Azure.yaml file that describes your application. We have a very clear structure with respect to, I would say, separation of concerns. We have one folder that contains the source code, and that's also quite nicely structured um, with front end and back end. We have a folder that contains the tests. We have one folder, one directory that contains all the information about the infrastructure, which I think is very nicely structured um, and modularized with respect to the usage of BICEP as, as a, as a language to describe the infrastructure as code. Um, this is, I think, really valuable. And then we have several other um, files that support you beyond the um, scope of deploying something, so of, of purely deploying something by CLI. So we have some templating around um, Azure DevOps. We have some templating around GitHub Actions. Be aware, DevOps is currently manually. Um, GitHub Actions is automated. Then we have some, some support around VS Code when you want to do local debugging. We have some dev container definition. And we have some one file that um, contains the information around the environments that you have defined. Now, don't mix it up with the environment of Azure Container Apps. That's the environments for the um, Azure Developer CLI. Yeah, um, did I forget something? Well, there is also Git Ignore in there. Um, that's, of course, of relevance when it comes to deploying something to GitHub or to, to, the, the, um, to GitLabs whatsoever. Um, I'm not super happy with that one. It just contains the .azure file, of course, because there is all the confidential information in there, which must not be deployed. Um, but for Node.js or for Python, I would have expected a much bigger um, file, and there is no um, no file, I think, in there. If Ah, oh, there, there are more. Okay, okay. I'm good. I'm fine. Um, it's really modularized, so you have also then git ignores in the corresponding source files. That's also, thinking about it, quite nice um, on the one hand side. So you have then all the things together, kind of self-contained. When you take a first glance and just see that git ignore with just .azure in there, um, at least my blood pressure first rise was, was a bit rising. But um, then checking here, and you, you really have to dig into the, the source code um to uh to to get into the um yeah basically the folder of the different sources uh you will see that there is a fair dot git ignore so there is no chance to to accidentally commit something that should not be committed and yeah with that 
I'm at the end of this video around uh, walking through the code that gets created by the templates of the Azure Developer CLI. Yeah, then um, with that, I hope I had some interesting stuff for you around the Azure Developer CLI, around the code. There will be more videos around the Azure Developer CLI, so stay tuned. And with that, ABC, always be curious. See you next time. Bye.